Hello and welcome to another episode of this T480 series in which I'm pimping out my um, T480, one of them, at least the one that I have for modding and tests, which is this one. As you can see, it's a little bit more used uh, from the keyboard, at least you can see that. I use this one to, to experiment. So in this one, I'm going to switch from 32 gigabytes, which is what I have right now to the 64 gigabytes, two modules of uh, 32 of Crucial. Now, these modules I have here it's, are DDR4, uh, rated for, I think it's uh, 3200 megahertz. As you may know, this laptop is limited to work with only, uh, I think it's 2400 megahertz on, on the RAM, so yeah. I mean, you lose some uh, performance there, but it is what it is. Now, before upgrading that, remember to go into the BIOS, as you just saw, and go to the power options and turn off the internal battery. It's very important if you touch anything on the motherboard. So uh, be safe there. Uh, don't uh, try your luck, <laughs> even though it might not happen anything, but uh, it's better to stay safe than sorry, right? now. Here in this video, I already opened this. It doesn't open that easily, but since I was testing stuff with it, I just pulled the screws like provisionally before actually closing them, right? Um, definitely. So what I'm going to do is basically um, open the, the two latches that um, guard the current RAM sticks there. As you can see, I have a Corsair Vengeance uh, module two of them and the, the the upgrade it's actually it's stupid simple it's it's very very simple um you just need to remove the old ram and put the new one um, you need to make sure that they're aligned correctly uh, as you can see one of them uh they have like this little notch in the middle so you need to align it the the modules accordingly don't force them take your time and and that's it it's it's pretty easy right as you can see there, it didn't match, I need to turn it over. So yeah, just put it in, press it until you see, hear the clack noise. And again, it's very, very simple. Nothing too special about it. What, why I wanted to do this video, because make this video, because there's a lot of people that are not sure if this is actually working or not. And I said, hey, let's just actually just do it and, and test it. 64 gigabytes of RAM on this laptop may be overkill. I don't think it's worth it actually, but again, it's an experiment. I, I wanted to test it and it's better to have more than, <laughs> than to be missing RAM, right? So yeah, but definitely here you will have like a bottleneck uh, on the CPU because for um, um, it's, it's eight threads. I mean, it's four cores, eight threads. So it's not a uh, very fancy CPU, but again, let's see if it actually works. Um, in my case, uh, <laughs> spoiler, it, it works, it's detected. So I wanted to make a bunch of tests here. First things first, uh, let's just try see if in it's recognized in the BIOS. Now, the thing with the BIOS is that uh, since we powered off the internal battery, when we pour it back on again, you need to make sure that the laptop is connected to the power source, as you can see with the charger. Now it will take some time <laughs> with 64 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, in, in my case, I was a little bit uh, skeptical at the beginning. I didn't, uh, I wasn't sure it, I was, it was going to boot, but it eventually did. So yeah, as you can see, I'm entering the BIOS here and you can see that uh, if you go where it says installed memory, you see I have uh, 65,536 uh, megabytes, so 64 gigs of, of RAM. So yeah, the BIOS, it's recognizing this now. Since I've touched a bunch of, of, of I made a bunch of upgrades like this in IT before, not all the hardware that says in the BIOS uh, you have so many or so much RAM, it's actually going to fully 
take advantage of it, right? So I said, okay, let's just double check everything and check it in Linux. I have Endeavor OS here. Um, it's a dual boot system and it's basically for tests. I'm just testing. I'm, I'm, I'm not very into Linux, but I want to jump there because reasons. <laughs> I will put another video uh, for that, but I'm kind of tired of, of Windows by now. And as you can see here in Endeavor OS, uh, it's also recognized. It's it's crazy that you only uh, spend uh, basically one gig of RAM to spin this uh, OS up uh, versus Windows where you at least uh, use like four gigs at least, right? Without anything else. So apart from that, I also wanted to try it on Windows because I wanted to see more stats of the RAM, I went and downloaded, um, apart from the usual check you do in, in my computer, I went and downloaded uh, the utility, this utility for checking uh, CPU and stuff. It's CPU Z, I think, CPU Z. But as you can see, <laughs> even the spans, are, uh, even the fans are spinning <laughs> while uh, um, booting up Windows and loading Windows, just bare Windows. It's, it's, it's crazy, man. I mean, again, this is not a super PC, but it's it's enough for daily tasks. And I think with Linux, I can I can push this PC a few years uh, onwards, right? So I downloaded the CPU Z, and yeah, you 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 can go and download the setup. Uh, I downloaded the zip version. I don't like to install unnecessary things if uh, like this program for example I might only use it once at the beginning to to test if stuff works or not and you just download the zip you uncompress it and you run the executable for 64 bits we wait a little bit and this should give me a little bit more detail regarding the uh, RAM and how it's working now one interesting thing here that I was a little bit concerned at the beginning is that as you can see the DRAM frequency is actually like 600, it, it switches between 600 megahertz and 1000 or almost uh, 1200 or something like that. And I was like, hmm, that's strange. It's, it's, it's jumping like this, right? And I thought, okay, maybe something weird with that or maybe it's just when it's idling, it's not pushing the old hardware to the max. It makes sense to actually be efficient and, and take the advantage of, of the actual hardware. So what I did is since um, I saw it was like switching up and down the frequency, I downloaded this uh, program, which is uh, Prime95. If you don't know about this program, it's a program that basically it's used for torture tests or stability tests, uh, basically for overclocking, but it's also useful just to push the push the limits a little bit on your hardware oh, okay i didn't bought the winrar <laughs> no surprise there i think and yeah again you you don't need to install this you just uh, decompress it uncompress it execute the prime 95 executable in parallel i have this windows uh, of cpu z open as you can see now right now it's uh, idling at 600 something megahertz and when I actually run the tests to uh, stress out the RAM and the chipset and, and the CPU, everything pretty much. Um, as you can see, I select for uh, the full memory bandwidth. Yeah, we leave it like that. Is And as you can see, the, the DRAM frequency pretty much stays locked on uh, 1200 megahertz also. Now, why is that? Because you need to multiply that by two uh, in order to get the actual um, speed of the the RAM right now, which is uh, 200, uh, sorry, 2,400 uh, megahertz. Man, I'm I'm really struggling with the numbers in English. I, I need to translate it real time from Spanish to English, so it's a little bit difficult. Sorry about that. Yeah, and if 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 I stop the Prime 95, as you can see, they're idling down, and uh, I think it's a normal behavior, right? So guys, uh, nothing else. Uh, this is just a little was lit, a little fun experiment. So I hope you find it useful and uh, stay tuned for for more mods.